I've always loved arcade culture. Growing up in the 90s, I still remember the excitement of walking into an arcade and seeing the mythical Mortal Kombat cabinet for the first time. I always joke that if I won the lottery and could afford to run a business at a loss, I'd spend the rest of my days running in a retro arcade. Unfortunately, I still haven't won the lottery, but I'm one step closer to my dream with this awesome new indie game. I'm Kutsky, and this is my review of Arcade Paradise. Get ready! Arcade Paradise is part life simulator, part retro-inspired game collection. The basic premise of the game is that your business mogul father decides to teach you a life lesson out of dropping out of uni by giving you one of his early forgotten businesses to manage, a laundrette. In the back of the laundrette, you find a couple of old arcade cabinets and decide to convert the laundrette into your dream arcade. So the gameplay loop starts like this. Go to work, wash laundry, dry laundry, pick up trash, unblock the toilet, collect money from the machines, and if you're lucky, you might be able to squeeze in a go of those retro arcade cabinets. If this sounds a bit boring, don't worry, everything in Arcade Paradise is gamified, so even the most mundane tasks are wrapped up in a simple burst of action. All of this should net you a tidy profit by the end of the day, which you can use to buy more arcades and to expand your premises. The game does evolve over time with an upgrade system that knocks out the more boring daily tasks before they outstay their welcome, and your focus slowly switches from the laundrette to operating the arcade to maximum profit. This is done by completing achievements within each game to boost their popularity, then tuning each game's difficulty and price per play to get the most profit per hour, moving unpopular machines next to more popular ones, and so on. True to life, your cabinets are going to break down from time to time, causing you to have to debug them, literally. And speaking of bugs, I did have some problems with the game crashing on the Nintendo Switch version at launch, but subsequent patches seem to have ironed out any problems. I only mention this because I'm reviewing the game a few months after release, currently on version 1.4, so if any of the launch reviews did mention the bugs or crashing, I wanted to let you know that they do seem to have been sorted now, as it was possible to lose a day's progress, which could be frustrating. As the game continues to progress, you get daily challenges that work like the achievement system on Xbox or trophies on PlayStation. You have three challenges each day to complete, which earn you a secondary currency and this allows you to buy the upgrade perks that I mentioned earlier, as well as music for the jukebox. And the music in the game is awesome too, with early 90s influenced tracks commissioned from indie musicians ranging from grunge to old school rave. I think you know which ones tick the box for me. I assumed that the story in the game was going to be pretty superficial, but as I got deeper into it, it became more heartfelt and I genuinely wanted to see the game through to find out where it ends. Without spoiling too much, there are various different storylines from investing into your friend's game studio to having your operation shut down and having to work a new job. Obviously the big draw of this game is the fact that every arcade cabinet that you can buy for your arcade is a fully functional retro inspired game that you can play. These range from very simple Pong clones to pretty deep twin stick shooters like Smash TV, side scrolling beat em ups like Final Fight, games reminiscent of Pipe Dreams, Dig Dug, Arkanoid, Outrun, Missile Command, the list goes on. I think there are 35 different games you can have in your arcade, and there are even more games hidden everywhere, such as on your PDA or on your office PC. At the time of review, I've pumped over 40 hours into the game, and I think I'm at the end game stage now, but I've still got a lot of upgrades and the jukebox music to unlock, and I've barely touched some of the games in the arcade. So I'm still enjoying the loop of completing three challenges per game day and see every last drop of content in the game. If you haven't guessed already, 
I'm kind of high on Arcade Paradise. Admittedly, this is partly because the premise is basically my dream game, but the concept really is well executed. Interesting story, evolving gameplay. Each mini game clearly has a lot of thought and effort put into them. I mean, 35 retro influenced games for £15.99 alone is a bargain, without even taking into consideration the actual full game that's built around them. Arcade Paradise is honestly the most enjoyment that I've had from a game so far this year, and I would highly recommend it to anybody with any interest in retro games or arcade culture in general. Hope you enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If so, as always, please drop me a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with new videos. And let me know in the comments what would be the first game that you would buy if you opened your own arcade. I know I sound like a broken record here, but I'd still have to go with OutRun 2. Or maybe Ridge Racer. Just from the nostalgia of playing the one in Blackpool when you get to sit in an actual Mazda MX-5 to play. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Kutsky signing out. Keeping the games alive.